This is the second lesson in our section dealing with obedience or the servant uh, with an obedient heart, the obedient heart of a servant. You can pick any, either one of those that you would like. We looked already at the fact that um, the Lord is working in us to make us uh, obedient service. And, and all of us know from the get-go that by nature we're not obedient. By nature we want to do what we want to do. So there is uh, a profound work uh, in, in our hearts that the Lord does to bring us to the place where, as we saw in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, we are willing and obedient. And we talked about the fact that the uh, desire of God is that we would find our pleasure in doing His pleasure, that we would find our delight in doing those things uh, which, which please Him, as we see in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We talked in the first lesson uh, different uh, definitions to help us to uh, grasp what obedience is, and uh, we won't we won't go over those, but I just call your your uh, to remembrance uh, concerning these things. Uh, for example, we said that uh, obedience is a long journey in one direction. We talked about Jesus setting his face like flint, uh, that that there was no looking back. That was one way we looked at it. Uh, another was, for example, uh, and and really as a, a a an example for all of us was Mary, how that when she was presented with the will of God, her response uh, to the angel uh, was, I am the Lord's servant. May it be unto me as you have said. And that demonstrates uh, the, the uh, willingness of her heart to do the will of God. So we have the, the double aspect, willing obedience. And, and you could also say joyful obedience willing obedience is really the highest mark that we're looking at. And today we're going to uh, lunge uh, deeper into this area of obedience, looking at uh, our second, uh, second lesson here, obedience, the delight of our Father's heart. Pleasing God is or ought to be the natural desire of every believer. There ought to be something on the inside of us that is uh, full uh, of deeply felt gratitude and love in response to the love that he has demonstrated to us in particular. I mean, there's many ways, but in particular, in the sending of the Lord Jesus Christ to die in our place, to, re to, to pay the penalty that we owed, to redeem us by his blood, having paid that price, and uh, giving unto us uh, righteousness and a, a eternal life. So there ought to be a response in the heart of each and every one of us as we look at, at all that God has done. As we said, starting with the redemption, we can talk about the fact of creation and all the wonders uh, that fill our hearts each and every day. Out of, out of this gratitude, out of this thankfulness, we ought to serve the Lord uh, with great delight. And there's a, a passage, uh, several passages we'll look at, but a passage that I would really like to touch on concerning this. Uh, we mentioned it in a previous lesson, but it will do, do us good to uh, revisit it and, and soak it in a little bit more. And I'm speaking of Psalm 40, Psalm chapter 40, verse 6 through 8 where the writer David discovered what pleased God and set his heart to accomplish it. In verse 6 through 8, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. It's good to know what God doesn't want, just as it's good to know what God does want. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ear hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So let's look, look at that. First of all, as I said, it's good to know what God wants us to do, what he desires of us, and what he doesn't require of us. First he says, sacrifice an offering, that's not on the table. 
the main thing is you've opened my ear. Now, opening the ear means that we have, a, uh, uh, through the work of the Spirit in our lives, been given a disposition to hear. And that's something that is absolutely precious because that's the pathway to repentance. It's the pathway to, to faith. You remember how Jesus spoke to the churches in the book of Revelation where he said, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Here we see the Lord demonstrating what pleases him. My ears hast thou opened. What you desire from me, God, is obedience. And then he goes on to say, burnt offerings and sin offerings thou hast not required. These were not the things. God didn't want sacrifices and offerings apart from a listening ear. You see, he required the sacrifices, but not in a superficial manner, in place of obedience. Obedience was the kicker. Obedience was the heart of the whole thing. Everything was to flow from an obedient heart. From the inside out, we worship God. From the inside out, we serve God. From the inside out is how God uh, uh, destined for us to live, to work. So it's not, it's not the sacrifice and obedience that he desires. It's the opened ear. And in verse 7, he says, Then, uh, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. And of course, Jesus, um, this is in part speaking of Jesus. It's a messianic prophecy. It's, it's, it's the Lord's Spirit speaking through David, of course. And he says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Now look what he says. What is it that empowers us to do the will of God? The very last part in, uh, phrase in verse 8 says, Yea, thy law is within my heart, or, or thy law is written within my heart. Well, who put it there? Who put that law within the heart of man? It was God. It was God. As I said, our tendency, natural tendency, is to disobedience. But God worked so in the psalmist, in the life of Jesus also, uh, to bring him to a place where his delight was to do the will of God. Now, this is a servant's heart. This is a disciple's heart. Why? Because this is Jesus's heart. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is written within my heart. God opens the ear. God opens the ear. What we see here is the delight of the psalmist heart was to do the will of God. And I pray today that, that our true delight is to do the will of the Father as well. Very important for us to, to grasp this truth, to understand it. Now, I would like to take a look in the book of Matthew at an instance where Jesus uh, rebuked the religious leaders of his time in, um, specifically because they got this order totally and completely wrong. As a matter of fact, all they were doing was giving the Lord lip service. In other words, there was the external, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, but there was no yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord coming from the heart. They were just putting on a show. And that's, you know, the, the term hypocrite. It's the, the Greek term from which uh, our, we get our word uh, actor, to act something out or to put a mask on. And this is this is one of the things that so irritates the Lord. It irritates us. When we find people uh, just giving us lip service, just saying, yeah, 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 I get it. Well, often parents with their children, you know what I'm talking about? We get that. We understand it. It's irritating. It, it, it ruffles our feathers. Well, it ruffles God's feathers too. And we have a passage here that, that demonstrates how it ruffled God's feathers uh, in, in Matthew chapter 15 and verses 1 through 11. And we're going to go ahead and, and just read it so that we uh, get Jesus' whole uh, commentary on this. It says in verse 1, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So you see here Jesus is saying to them, You, you are, are complaining because the disciples break your tradition. But my question to you is, Why do you break the commandment of God by exalting your tradition above it? So this is, this is Jesus. He's very poignant on this point. 
in verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or to his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. So they weren't able any longer to, to care for their parents. And honor, uh, honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Well, sure, they were getting enriched. They were telling the people, look, it's a better deal if you give that money you were going to give your, to your parents to the temple. You know, bring that as a gift and an offering to God. Well, of course, they were the ones that were administering the money. They were the ones that had taken their cut. So we see here the corruption working in the hearts of the uh, of the scribes and Pharisees, and and but let's go on. He said, and Jesus nails it. He says, "You, you hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth near unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me." So you see, they were doing the out, the outward things. They were they were putting on the big show, but their heart had been uh, had departed from the Lord. It was far from God. In other words, they they weren't sensing and knowing and obeying what they knew of the heart of God. They they were hardened uh, and, and desirous uh, for for earthly profit and and for exalting their own ideas and their own traditions. Uh, through the authority that had been given to them by God above the very commandment of God. Read that again. This people draws near unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, huh? in, in, in other words, in vain means in, in a useless manner. In, in, a, in a useless manner, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of his mouth, this defileth the man. And in other verses it says the very reason why is because what comes out of the mouth is what comes out of the heart. So we're seeing here that the Lord wants us to get things uh, on the correct keel. He wants us to be moving in the right direction. He wants us to serve him with a willing heart with delight. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Thy law, not my own ideas, not my own traditions, not the way we do it in our church. Thy law, thy word, is written within my heart. In Luke chapter 6, 46, Jesus asks his disciples a, a very frank and penetrating question. He asked them, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? This is a classic example of lip service. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But in the heart, you know, we talk about people who are passively resistant. Uh, they never, they never give a, a big show of their resistance. Personally, I'd rather have somebody, you know, just get in my face. No, at least they're honest. But the passive resistant uh, are always saying, yes, yes, and giving you the impression that they're with you, but they really aren't demonstrated by the lack of, of consistent action on their part. Jesus also assured us that the kingdom of heaven is reserved for those who do his will. Not for everybody, folks, but for those who will do his will. And we're going to look into Matthew chapter 7 and verses 21 to 23 to get a good, uh, a good view of this. Very important that we understand that uh, uh, we have to serve the Lord according to his terms and from the heart. So he says here in seven, chapter 7 of Matthew, verses 21 through 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And you can see how this connects with 
what we saw from Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? So we have other people here that Jesus is addressing. Saying, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. I'm not interested in lip service. Again, I'm not interested in you just, you know, lipping it up. I want to see the delight in your heart, the law of my Father written in your heart. 21 again, not every one that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many, note that, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. So here we see people who believed that they were secure before the Father, believed that they were walking in step with the Lord. Why? Because they had some outward testaments working, some outward testaments, but their hearts were not right with God because although they did these things, and we see these things, you know, all the time, people who are prophesying in the name of the Lord, people who are rebuking the devil, people who are doing works, you know, philanthropy and giving and all of these things, but a, a person such as this can, can, can do those things for all the wrong reasons. And uh, one of the uh, excellent examples that we uh, see of that can be found in the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verses 1 through 3. And this is just kind of a little parenthesis, but it's an, it's an important thing to see. Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I can move mountains and have not love, charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. And what we see from that is the fact that we can be doing all of these external good works, these external good things, having the faith, you know, and speaking in, in tongues of men and of angels, uh, being charitable, supposedly, you know, by, by giving uh, to uh, our goods to the poor and even suffering uh, in the name of the Lord, giving my body to be burned. But if I don't have, if I don't have love, I, I am nothing. If I don't have love, I'm a, I'm a clanging symbol. And there you go again, that, that empty service to God. That, that if I have not this love, it profiteth me nothing. So we see that it is very possible for one to do all the right things, but be wrong on the inside. And it's God that knows, and, he, and he's trying to communicate to us, check up, know for of a, of a certainty that you're doing my will from the heart. We don't want to get there in that last day where, where the Lord you know, says, says to us, I never knew you. you know, Depart from me, you that work iniquity. God is looking for genuine service, and he promised to reward it. So we have to uh, uh, be discerning in these things and make certain that uh, we are serving God for all the right reasons. Now, Jesus spoke of his own purpose and desire to do the will of God in John chapter 4 and verses 31 and th through 34, and we'll take a look at it. So we see the fire burning in, in the Lord Jesus Christ and where his uh, um, joy was really born and, and, and how he, how, by how he lived. In John chapter 4, verse 31 through 34, it says, In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him or asked him, saying, Master, eat. But he said to them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, have any man brought him something ought to eat, something to eat? Jesus said, my meat, huh? my meat, that which nourishes my soul, that which fills me to the overflowing. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You remember we spoke earlier about this dual process, to do the will of God and to finish finish the work. In other words, to run the race all the way to the end. Um, and as, as uh, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, it's, you know, it's, it's one thing to start, 
but it's better to finish. And this is what Jesus is saying. It's, it's that dual action. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. It was the thing that really motivated uh, his heart. And we can see this, you know, expressed uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a short, in a, in a brief statement in uh, the very same book, John chapter 6 and verse 38, where Jesus simply says, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So what we see here is uh, Jesus uh, delighting in the will of the Father, delighting in his heart to do the will of the Father. Obedience is the joy of our Father's heart, and it should be the joy of ours as well.